Okay, let's get started. We got a replay review here. Uh, let me get the form pulled up and the code logged in. It's gonna be a 30 minute replay review of a trace player we've been working with before. Um, so we'll take a quick look at this. Um, Masters 2. <laughs> it looks like you're working on improving your sleep. That's awesome. Um, wait, this is not even Tracer. This is Soldier. Okay, we're looking at some Soldier, guys. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a nice change of pace. Um, I'm losing my brain slowly through the, uh, the the Tracer VOD, so I was expecting Soldier here, or Tracer here, and we ended up getting Soldier, so what a nice, pleasant surprise. Uh, okay, so this is Master's Soldier Play. Uh, what do you hope you got the session? One or two micros and one or two macros to focus on. Okay, working on getting additional and improving sleep. That's awesome. Good for you. What do you feel is only back for improving? Mostly finding time to grind, improving and focusing on the goal. Okay, short term is Grandmaster still. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at this and let's talk about Soldier. Now, Soldier is uh, one of the more interesting heroes I think in Overwatch because he is such of a, a he's such a, a general player. Um, he's one of the he's the opposite of a specialist when it comes to his play style, whether it's positioning, flanking, taking angles, range, anything. It's something that we've talked about before, uh, where you know you're you're thinking about soldier as like a sniper sometimes. Like you look at the enemy composition, like let's say that Hans is on Sombra Reaper, like there is absolutely nothing there that you really want to get close to. However, that Hanzo complicates things. And like let's say that they were on as a Yada, Widow, Ash, anything like that, then all of a sudden those heroes kind of tend to outrange you. So for soldier, it's always about finding I have more mobility than half the cast. I have less mobility than half the cast. I have more range than half the cast. A little, I would say a little bit more than half, but I have less range than half the cast. So it's about finding that nuance smack dab in the middle and finding that position that complements um, your strengths while minimizing your weaknesses. So for example, in this situation, you might want to take angles where the tracer and doomfist can't reach you. Uh, or, or it's hard for them to reach you. Or you might want to take a sight lane where the Hanzo can't spam you, right? So for, for, for this, like you're gonna roll out here, you're gonna auto, auto, obviously automatically roll out high. Um, and this is like a perfect example. If I know Hanzo is on the left, for example, okay? But I can take this sight line here and not peek the Hanzo and yet keep distance between myself and Doomfist and Tracer, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. The alternative is I could see Doomfist Tracer over here maybe focusing on my tank, and then I could take a flank over here onto the Hanzo knowing that Doomfist and Tracer can't punish me for taking this flank because it's too far away. I realize I've been talking this entire time without a screen coming on. Let's try this again. Um, so for example here, if I can position right here and go, oh, I can avoid the Hanzo sight line um, that's on the left here, but still keep distance between myself and Doomfist and Tracer, perfect. If I can take an angle onto the Hanzo, but stay away from Doomfist and Tracer, that's good too. So basically it's like, you don't want to be uh, peaking snipers, but you also want to be keeping your distance from flankers. So it's like, how do you find that dichotomy? How do you find that balance? And this is kind of where we find it ourselves right here. I think this is pretty good, all things considered. Good use of your sprint there to avoid the damage. Um, the timing of your sprint is one of the most important micro things that you can do. Um, because it's going to be preventing damage from coming in and allow you to reposition. Because with the thing with the soldier is that you very rarely are going to be able to set your feet for a long period of time. You're going to constantly be moving. So it's all about doing it as quickly and as efficiently as you possibly can so you can get back to resuming the shooting. Your positioning mistake here is obviously that you're peeking a Hanzo. Uh, at this range anyway and without helix not that you should never peek a hanzo that you just need a good reason to do it right he's half hp you've hit him with the helix um you've gotten a little bit closer maybe you have the element of surprise so right now i guess for you it's like immediately like as soon as you see this what angle should you peek here what angle where should you be and i think there's two options here one would be to cut off your sightline with the hanzo and just spam tank line Two would be to utilize your Doomfist re-engaging on the back line as an opportunity to take an off angle over here to where you can kind of set up a deeper flank. The tracer's dead, the map has opened up. Let's see what you can do with it. So <clears throat> very attentive to the Hanzo shooting. Heal station pretty unnecessary here. This is kind of sloppy. You see, the, the problem with this position here is you're like, oh, it's got I changed my sight line up. But the problem in this position here is you're still peaking Hanzo. You're still peaking Hanzo, so this isn't an improvement of where you were two or three seconds ago. In fact, the improvement would have been, as I said, to play the conservative angle and not peak the Hanzo, or to play the aggressive angle and actually rotate all the way over here. And what happens over here is if you can get to this angle here, plant your heal station, is it a very, very high risk, high reward play? Yes. 
But a solo Doomfist is actually going to have a hard time chasing you that far when you have your healing station and when you don't have to peek the Hanzo. So, for example, you're, you're, you're not playing to your strengths here. You're not playing to your strengths here. Your strength here is range by avoiding the Hanzo. Your strength here is nothing. You're peeking the Hanzo and, and you're not getting anything out of it either. So I'm actually not a fan. I would prefer you to be, utilize your mobility or utilize your range by but by avoiding the Hanzo at the same time. Find that nuance. It's tricky, right? So what ends up happening? Ah, oh, this is so scary. I would probably have run back on across the bridge back to our team. Um, yeah, okay. We got a little lucky. Um, the angle actually, and we actually end up getting bullied onto an angle, which is kind of funny. Um, and there we go. I don't understand the obsession with this skin. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out right there. If you're using this skin, you're wrong. Uh, it doesn't really matter what about, just everything. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're, you're literally a watermelon head. It looks like it looks like somebody just slapped the watermelon on a soldier's head and, and he's too embarrassed to take it off. Um, I don't care if it's free. The default skin is also free, and that is better than what we've got here. Um, here, I wouldn't be mad if you did push up a little bit here. Maybe, obviously, you have to be careful of, like, Sonic and stuff. But remember, you have the mobility, so you could greet things. Now, if I was Cassidy, maybe I wouldn't go this far. But I, I would push up here. I would look for a little sight line. Yeah, you're going to decide too late. And so now, by the time you get there, you're like, crap. So now I'll go back to the top. Go back to the top. Stop wasting time. You see, this is the problem with Soldier. Soldier's mobility. Okay, let's talk about Soldier's mobility. There's two ways to use Soldier's mobility. One is to avoid a dive, avoid pressure, to run away from threats, right? That's how you're gonna be using his mobility in the minority of circumstances. It's not a vast minority, but most of the time it's gonna be not used like that. The majority of the circumstances are gonna use situations like this where your advantage is the fact that you can take a go early for a peek here to help your Doomfist and Tracer, and then still be where you would want to be elsewhere. A Cassie or a Hanzo up here is better than you. I'm just, it's just that that's just facts. They're just stronger than you. However, uh, Cassie and Hanzo couldn't drop, get a little bit of peaks to help their Doomfist Tracer and still be right back at home two seconds later. That's something that they can't do, right? So the problem here is you drop too late. And then instead of running back to your position, you have plenty of time to go take the off angle again, to take that high ground again. And instead you're sitting on the floor. What, what, of what benefit is this position right here, right? You're going to be peaking Hanzo. I mean, I assume you're peeking Hanzo. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's in the spawn. But you're at point blank range on a Doomfist Tracer, and now you're running when you should be shooting. That's the key thing. It's about finding times to rotate positions so that you can be shooting when the fight starts and not running. Because if you do, if you don't do that, then you'll be running when the fight starts instead of shooting. You kind of see what I'm saying? Um, and really, I would not be planting my healing station until I'm really sure that I've loved my angle because it ends up even baiting you to stay longer than you should, right? You see how accessible you were to these guys? Way too easy of a kill. All right. Fine, clear them out. This isn't that deep. Just clear them out. Good juke. Good job. Doomfist bails you out of jail. Okay, now right here. This is what we want to see, right? You don't, you're peaking the Hanzo, but you're peaking him at point blank range. You have the advantage in this duel, right? You have the advantage if this was an Ash. You'd have the advantage if this is a Widow, if this is a Zen, any other sniper, Ana. You have the advantage here. Win the duel now. Let's go. And again, like your mobility allows you to quickly run away from Doomfist to quickly take the angle. It doesn't sound like, oh, that was that much of an advantage, but it's, it's a small advantage. You got here quicker. All right. So I want to see a shot, maybe a couple of shots into a Helix here, or maybe just a Helix into shots. Let's see what we got. So micro here, your helix allows for a predictable arc, and it's also a very fast burst of damage. So you got options here. You either aim for the head, and you hit the shot, or you finish, or you hit the helix first to put him on a predictable arc, and hit the shots afterwards. Um, there's arguments for both. One of the arguments with finishing with helix is that it's a burst of damage that the enemy team won't expect. Uh, it's obviously a little bit easier to land. Um, and it also can catch them when they duck behind cover. The other argument with Helix is that it puts them in a predictable arc. Uh, it uses it sooner so you get it back faster. I, I can see arguments for both here. But the problem with how we do this here is we back up, I think, a little bit too soon. I don't know if we're like nervous about like the Kiriko or whatever. Um, but then we Helix early. But then during his predictable arc, which we see right now, we're not actually peaking during that moment of time which means that we're not likely to get the kill. We've missed that opportunity. 
you need to make sure that you hit that. Either you helix first and shoot, or you shoot, shoot, then helix. Um, because now this is like the perfect frame for when we need to be shooting him when he's on his helix arc, <laughs> right? But we're not shooting him, he's behind a wall. Oh gosh, that one hurts. Run away. I would not be running away all the way over here though, mate. Remember, you've got your healing station, you've got your legs, right? Take your angle over here. You've heard the Doomfist use cooldowns. You've seen the Tracer engaged over here. Go over here, take an angle here. Don't be so scared, don't be so scared. See, now you're like, this fight is happening and you had the opportunity to take an off angle, but you're too scared to take it, even though this off angle was perfect. Because, okay, here's a question. Why is this angle perfect for you? You've seen Tracer disengage. You've heard Doomfist use cooldowns. Why is this angle for perfect? Okay, so you know the status of the people that would threaten you. And not only that, look at the distance with which you would be on the enemy team, which if the Doomfist Tracer wanted to punish you, it would be actually kind of hard. You're a little bit far away. Now, I, you could see the argument that like, oh, he's up here. You know, I, I, I get that too. But I think that this opportunity is way, 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 way too free. And this is going to be the downtime that has you running with mid-fight instead of shooting. You got to be better than that. Pfizer is okay. I would prefer a little bit more of a confirmation, but I guess you saw Brig there, so it's good enough. Again, we're not really interested in the results, right? We want we want intentions because intentions are going to carry games, not results. Well, yeah. intentions are going to build the habits that are going to be carrying games over the long term, not just oh, it happened to work on this particular game. Ah, you got impatient. <laughs> I want you to think about what you should do here. I want you to think about what you should do here. Because you got a really, really tough option here. There's two positions in this map that I think that would be reasonable. All right? I'm going to give you a few seconds. I would, I'll have you pause the video because I'm going to get right into it here. Pause. Okay. You've got two options. You either go aggressively on this Hanzo and win the 1v1 at point blank range, which again, is scary, but you got a Tracer on him, you've heard Stormbow, and you have your Helix, right? Run up here. Helix a guy and kill him and then take the nice long juicy sightline flank onto the back line. Or if you're like, ah, eh, the more conservative option is to run back here, avoid peeking the Hanzo, and take the longest sightline that you can onto the enemy core. Which one do I prefer? I actually think I prefer the play in the Hanzo. But you need to go. You need to go. You see, you're, you're too slow. You're too slow. So you sit out here in this position is a lot more at risk than this position up here. It's too close, right? Um, now we can also argue here that, okay, we lost track of the trace, the trace is able to sneak up on us, but the, you see all this time that you're standing here is allowing the enemy Doomfist and Tracer to stage on you. You either need to aggressively take an angle and flank where your supports can see you, or you need to keep your distance from the enemy divers. You're kind of doing neither here. You're kind of playing at the Hanzo at distance, and yet you're still close to the enemy flankers, and you're gonna die. Too close to the flankers? When they have cooldowns, too far from the sniper when he has a sideline. You're getting kind of the boat, the worst of both worlds here. Everything on Soldier is like positioning and aim. That's it. That's like the entire hero is positioning and aim. Like a lot of hit scans are like that, right? But Soldier is like the, 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 the Soldier and Widow are like the perfect, like his cooldowns are not hard uh, to use. Um, it's literally just positioning and aim. Um, I don't know if there's a lot to pull from this one. You were down one. You were a little bit slow to react to the Doom ult. Um, I would not be popping my healing station when he's coming out of ultimate because he's going to have power punch. So you really don't want to be eating the power punch regardless. So your job is to juke the power punch first. Then you can healing station because you can heal station and dual Doomfist if he doesn't have power punch. Uh, so this is like, I guess, more of a micro thing. So you should have just at this point in time, either run circles or literally just run up the stairs and just run. So I see this here, I'm here, I'm juking behind the corner, I'm juking behind the corner, juking behind the corner, I hear the slam, I hear the punch, maybe I need to focus on juking that and then maybe run up the stairs um, or run towards my team. You kind of misplayed this one here. And so by the time you get to the stairs, it's kind of too late. Just keep running, keep running, keep running. Nice helix, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Now you can heal station. Yeah, because he doesn't have his power punch, so you can you can stand your feet a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, you kind of see what I'm saying? Like, this is like, you, you you played it pretty poorly with all due respect, but you do see the strengths of your hero. Like, okay, it didn't feel great, but a lot of resources were put into killing you, not just the enemy tank, and you're able to waste a lot of time. A lot of time. When the enemy tank is focusing you and has resources and you're just running around the map, 
It's not a bad trade. Okay, now, again, where should you be? Where should you be? Where is a position where you can either take an angle on this Hanzo up close or avoid his sight lines yet still maintain distance on the enemy divers? All right, this is not it. This is simultaneously too close to the divers and yet too far from the Hanzo, right? You see me? You see this angle here? You start to off angle from here. They have to pick and choose about whether they go for you and BAP. You have a little bit of distance between yourself and the Doomfist and Tracer. You have a little bit of a obstruction between you and the Hanzo, right? They will have to pick and choose. If Tracer starts to blink out for you, you can run away, get support from your Ana. Honestly, if you you could even like stand your ground versus a Tracer at this distance. Because here's the thing. Tracer doesn't beat you in a 1v1 if she has to use two blinks to get to you. You hear me? That's what you want to be doing. Even a Doomfist. If a Doomfist has to use two cooldowns to reach you, because you're too far away. He don't he doesn't he don't win that 1v1. He doesn't win that 1v1. He doesn't win that 1v1. So the distance, even if they close the distance, they had to spend something to close that distance. And that's what you want to be doing, right? If a tracer doesn't have if a tracer only has one blink by the time she gets any, there you go, we're just too slow. Um, which is ironic considering our hero should be getting here really fast. Uh if a tracer has to use blinks to get on top of you, then she's one blink away from a recall, right? Especially with a hero with helix. You see this? There it is. There's your helix. Stop panicking. Stop panicking here. You need to stop panicking. This obviously I would be positioned maybe a little bit near cover. So like either here or a little bit closer to here. Or if you're gonna take this aggro of an angle, maybe here. Um, I mean I get that this particular map it's like doesn't feel like there's a lot of cover where you want to be here. I get that. But like look at this right here. So the Hanzo does peek and shoot you. The healing station is fine. You start to run though. Don't run. You know how many blinks this tracer has? <laughs> right? She's a helix away from death right or a recall so you're panicking here but you need to realize that she has no re she has no recall and again here don't be scared right you see this she's the scared one because especially when she comes out of that recall one freaking blink one blink she's gone right you see that you see the difference between that engagement with the tracer and everything that's happened prior to this and you didn't even play it well <laughs> you could have shot her i don't think you realize like how much of an advantage you had there um and that's a and that's a big deal that's a really big deal that applies to Genji's, that applies to Doomfists, applies a little bit to Winston's as well if you can avoid his landing damage, right? I mean, this is kind of weird. The fight's kind of lost. I probably, at this point in time, I would have been very comfortable with you um, just honestly holding this angle and shooting. Because remember, like, I know you're thinking, oh, Doomfist, the Tracer will chase me. Yes, but you've got a pretty short, tight sight line. You have the advantage on this Hanzo, because even though it's a little bit longer, he doesn't see you, so you could kill him. And if Doomfist, Tracer chase you, you have the distance with which you can run away and react in time. For this Tracer to reach you, she will have to use two blinks. We have the same problem that she had in the last time. Um, so you're kind of overcompensating here and freaking out too much when you legitimately could have just played. Like, you see this? This Tracer's not chasing you. Grab the Mega. Nice. High ground is going to be meaningless here because the fight's going to be on the uh, their high ground. This is fine. I probably would not have popped a Visor. Oh, you're trolling. I probably would not have popped Visor once I heard Rally. Instead, just focus on shooting and distracting and then maybe look for a later Visor. Obviously, the Doom Pistol is a bit of a troll. And then yeah, because that that was again an opportunity where you could have created a lot of space. You would not have killed anything, but you could have created a lot of space. Okay, here we go again. Where's that Hanzo? Where's that Doomfist? Where's that Tracer? What do you guys think about this position here? Kind of awkward, isn't it? Now, there's not always going to be a perfect position for your hero. Like if I look at this right now. The only flank that I see that's reasonable with distance is this flank right here, right? Where I can create a lot of distance between myself and the Doom and Tracer. The problem is, is that also peaks the Hanzo, so maybe not the play. There is also, you could wrap around to here. This might be the play, but maybe you're thinking, oh, it might be too easy for the Doomfist to engage me. This still might be the play. Um, I would still probably recommend this. I would just need you to wait for a Doomfist to use a cooldown first. So this might be the best flank for you, given the situation. Tracer can't reach you. Uh, Brig, Hanzo, very close to them. So it's a very, very scary situation for them. And so if you time this flank well, I think you're going to be good to go. If you're playing this from a longer sightline for the more safe play, because it's not really that safe, um, then I think this position is okay right here. I would just prefer you to be a little bit closer to cover. Um, will you take the flank? You will take the flank. Lovely. It's just extremely late. There's a difference between late and 
and fights over late, you know what I'm saying? And this is why the Kiriko focuses on you, because she's like just, she's being chilling, right? Because there's nothing really going on. This fight's won, you know? So, yeah. I, I appreciate the effort, just needs to be faster. And even then, you're still you're still doing okay. Like, that's still a mechanics test. Grab a health pack, grab a health pack, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Now, check it. Kind of weird, very high risk, high reward, but this there is some distance between yourself and the Doomfist and the Tracer. There's also, you have an angle on the Hanzo where like, okay, I get it. You're not always gonna be able to play point blank in a Hanzo to be able to cleanly win that one to one. In fact, it's not always optimal to do that because it's easier for him to hit a Storm Arrow. However, he's not looking this way. I think this, this, this should work. As long as we respond well and quickly here, this should work. I don't know that I would run away here. I would anticipate them to push, but I do, and I would also open with Helix here too. Cause like, okay, remember, look at this here. You're looking for like raw damage here, right? Look at this guy, he's low. Certainly Helix that. I don't know why we don't Helix that, very strange. Um, but you're anticipating them to push you, so you run away, not knowing that the enemy team is actually pretty low in resources and that they don't end up pushing you. you. If you have distance between yourself and the enemy team like this, you will have time to react most of the time. There's some exceptions, like let's say there was a Sombra that could just hack you. You might need to like pre-rotate, but there isn't here. I think you'll have time to be able to react to them engaging you or just even looking your direction and then rotate. I think this rotation takes too long and this rotation is too scared. Um, obviously hindsight's 20-20 here. Like they don't go for you, so therefore it was the wrong play. Uh, but I think you could I think you would have had time to react accordingly. That being said, I appreciate that we were on the flank there. Just think it could have been done a little bit better. Okay, taking top. You're way too ahead of your team. Be careful. Where's Hanzo? Where's Tracer? Good. Creating a little bit of distance. You know where Tracer is, so you push her, right? Anytime you know where Tracer is, again, you have that advantage there. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Good, 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 good. Doing station is fine. We're, we're killing it here. Okay, so they're on Soldier and they're on Hanzo. So how does that change things for you? Well, it's a, it's a minor detail here. Um, but I think the big thing um, is gonna be about you creating some distance when uh, we're talking about Doomfist, but about playing more aggressive off angles when they're in Soldier Hanzo. Because the Soldier can contest you on an off angle, because, you know, Soldier, right? But the, he's gonna punish you less, uh, more, less so than a Tracer. So now we have more distance and uh, more opportunities on flanks. Now it's really just a Doomfist that you're worried about, okay? Run. Sure. Careful. Don't be yeah, Don't peek that. Like as soon as you're here and he's looking directly at you, I would not be peeking here. What I would be considering is being like, well, crap, they cleared me out. Where can I go? Um, you could hard flank here. You could take an angle here. Um, you could try to rotate back to here and see if you can get a sightline on this Doomfist. You could even just, do, here's the other thing too, just shift your angle to a different off angle from this Hanzo so that you deny his cover or that he has to either pick and shoot your backline or he picks and shoots you. You being here is, it's very easy for him to cross here on like three or four people. I get it though. There aren't a lot of options at this point in time without being out of this fight for a long period of time. Be careful about the peeking here. One thing that you could do if you want to peek a sniper from main, do it not now. Do it now, right? When you because because this is this is like when Hanzo has to actually pay attention to what's going on to his side and not what's going on in your back line. Just a small adjustment you can make there. Okay, thinking about positioning here. Thinking about positioning. I'm I'm thinking given the situation that you're in here. I think even with the Doomfist, I, I would probably prefer you to do one or two things. You can either take the conservative off angle here, um, maybe risk, uh, maybe like here, risk the Hanzo, maybe take an off angle here, um, or you would immediately to rotate to this position and go for a late visor. Let's see what you do. Do not play card though. Do not play card. Your sightlines here are terrible, and you're also picking the Hanzo. You could take this position here and just completely laser this Doomfist and actually kind of, you kind of LOS the Hanzo here. Look at how good this sightline is here. You're way too close, way too close. And look at how much time, look at that. He hits two people, two people. Not a good setup, not a good setup. 
Good. Buys this is fine. You are a little low, so just be careful. I would be very careful about pushing this here. Keeping pressure on her is good, though. Heal station, heal station, heal station. Oh my days, mate. Heal station. You need to you need to ego this, right? So heal station, right? Like even before this, as soon as she comes out, like there's just no way that she lives that. Oh, we don't even get our helix off. That's a that's a bit of a mechanical misplay. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going. Um, keep going here. On the flank, this kind of stuff is a lot more viable when they're not on tracer. Ooh, you were. Oh, you're trying to touch. Oh, you didn't know oh, you're your hands are good touch. Or you're, you're doing good touch. Ooh, that's scary. You get a kill. You get another kill. I would be pushing top here. 100% be pushing top. Be pushing, pushing top, I say. Pushing top. Get that kill. Kill is very important right here. Yes. Take the flank. Yeah, I was going to say, take the flank. It's open now. Be sneaky. Be sneaky. Be late. Be late. Okay, your Doomfist is in. Now you're in. Sneaky. Good. You see, look at this Hanzo, right? He's concerned about you, he's concer and then he ends up dying to you, and he ends up dying to the follow-up from your Doomfist and your Ana as well. Okay? It's good. Split his attention, right? Use your mobility. Sometimes your mobility is your strength. Sometimes your range is your strength. Sometimes it's both. You guys are alright. Good. Good anticipation. Don't don't run all the way back. Once you hear him out, go right back again. This downtime is killing me. You as soon as somebody sneezes at you, you don't you you run away, which is good. But then you don't decide. Hmm, are they chasing? Okay, I go back. You you just keep running. It really did not need to keep running here. Okay, so let let's wrap this one up for you. So here are your priorities for you. Number one, I want you to be considering enemy composition with your positioning, rotating accordingly. Uh, is my advantage my range? Is my advantage the angles or my mobility? And be able to pick and choose the position based off of what the composition gives. Now, I won't say that the enemy composition is the only factor. Maybe not even the most important factor. I would be very attentive to the map that you're playing on and what positions are good soldier positions. However, as I said in the recent dynamic positioning video, a lot of it is dependent on what the enemy composition and what the enemy team is doing. And because you have legs and because you're very flexible with your positioning compared to other uh, DPS like a Reaper or a Widow uh, that have very strict signatures of what they do, you could be super dynamic with how you play. Just react with what's given. What do, what do I want? What does the enemy team give me? I take that, right? Um, I think for you, a lot of your positioning was not as considerate of sight lines and not as considerate of where the enemy divers were. Now keep in mind, you can be very confident taking divers when there's distance between yourself and the divers, right? You could forcing their cooldowns just to be able to get to you is super high value and can allow you to take those 1v1s. In terms of micro, I felt like we were a little bit slow to helix at many points in time. Um, just really nothing more complicated. Not like, oh, our combos were bad. It just sometimes felt like we weren't helixing properly. I think that would be helpful as well. Um, and then obviously the, the one thing with soldier that is like the most important, I guess, micro tip is just knowing when you're running and knowing when you're healing, right? Sometimes we see you, and really this is a very common mistake, is using your heal station when really you should be running or using your running when you probably would have been fine to just pop your healing station and just hold your ground. I think if you're able to fix those issues, I think you're going to be seeing a, a big improvement in your soldier gameplay. Um, couple other details that may or may not have come out in this VOD, but might just be good to know. Make sure that you always have a target in mind with your visor. Don't blind visor. Even if it's just one kill, a kill is a kill, but you need to know where that target is, who that target is. Uh, making sure that cover is like a big priority for you, obviously. Uh, another little detail which ties in with our positioning, which is when you take an angle and you're playing versus these dive characters, kind of anticipating their dive and knowing where you're going to go to next. So an escape route, for example, if I'm jumping a backline as a Winston, I need to know not only who I'm diving, but how am I living this dive? What cover am I playing? Um, what corner am I playing? What uh, little, I don't know, 
phone booth am I going to hide behind to be able to buy time for me to be able to jump out? It's kind of like a, I'm taking an aggressive angle, but I'm thinking ahead of time that I'm probably going to be pushed here. So where do I go from here? Uh, and when you're playing versus these Doomfist Tracers, Ombre Comps especially, you kind of already need to know not only the position that makes the most sense, but if they push me because they're going to push me, where would I go to next? And so you're able to react that much faster. Uh, preparation for that uh, escape route will help make the escape route that much smoother. But yeah, hope it makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll chat with you later.